I'm excited to welcome up Chris Regal of Stratcash. Come join us. So Jeremy, you're a tough act to follow. Uh, in your discussion of retail media has really taken off the last three years. Um, you make me feel a little bit old. I've been doing this since 1999. Mm -hmm. So, it, but it is very true to say that in the last three years, you've seen this incredible arc of retail media for a whole series of reasons. We'll talk about some of those today. So today we're going to be talking about effectively the store's media and shopper's audience. What does that mean to the retailer? What does that mean to the shopper? And how are retailers starting to look at shoppers as audiences, both in store and out of store? And how can that be beneficial? So, stores, media, shoppers, audience, three point plan for 2024, and the best and highest purpose, what we call the North Star in regional environments. So, a bit about Stratacash. Uh, I'm Chris Regal, I'm the CEO and founder of Stratacash. Uh, that is Stratacash Digital City, uh, also known as the State of Ohio. Uh, within that complex, we have uh, 600 of the top retail media experts around the world operating roughly 3.5 million screens in 28 countries uh, across the globe. We get to see everything, and there's some amazing trends that you see in different parts of the world that you can share across customer learnings and insights. Retail media now and that in-store screen environment is becoming incredibly interesting, both at the display side, at the sensor side, and the intelligence side that can be used to help that customer on the journey and then unlock substantial new opportunities for revenue for those retailers. The store is medium. So to Canadianize my presentation a bit, uh, the Hudson's Bay Charter originally was signed in 1670, and these are pictures from the first Hudson's Bay store in Winnipeg in 1881. Hard to see, but in the lower left corner, they're actually paintings in that store promoting specific products. So that idea that retail media is new, no, it's been around for that part. I would assume if you were in a cave and selling mammoth ribs or steaks, you probably have pictures of the mammoths on the side of the cave. So retail media has been around for quite a long time. That being said, retail media evolves with the consumer experience. So what started as printed signs, billboards, radio, television, coupons, newspaper advertising has now moved into mobile and has moved into tactile to loyalty. In-store digital displays, and ultimately, as Jeremy said as well, streaming, huge opportunity in being able to serve that customer. The relevance of me as a consumer is saying, how do I get that customer things that are relevant? When I watch streaming today, there's a lot of missed opportunity there, uh, just because we do not have targeting, we do not have intelligence coming into those networks. But you as retailers, as brands, can unlock a lot of value by knowing how to do that and do that better. Retail media today looks completely different. Uh, you have Moore's Law, which is computing drops in cost uh, by 50% and doubles in power. You have Metcalf's Law, which is every exponential addition to a network increases its value. I want to call it Regal's Law, the proximity of a screen to a consumer has a direct impact on customer behavior. But the simple point is, as screen technology and sensors have come dramatically down in cost, and continue to come down in cost, you will see screens everywhere. That does not mean turn the store into a casino with lots of blinking lights that overcome the consumer and say, get me out of here. But rather, at every point, who in the room has too many and too inexpensive labor at your stores? Every retailer that we work with all around the world says, hey, I have a labor truck. I cannot get enough people. They cost too much. We're going to use digital technology to help that customer along their journey in my store to make that a better experience. The key point of retail media is making sure that that experience is the most important thing. At the end of the day, you are a retailer. You are not an advertising company. However, there are opportunities where the two intersect to be able to drive benefit, but ultimately it's win the shop or win the day in every case. If you look at the four major categories of retail media, online, mobile, in-store, and off-site screen, there's a, a bifurcation that's happening now. Online search and display mobile apps. Online is still 70%, 70% of all the revenue in this category. Online and mobile have peaked and plateaued, and now they're starting to pull back a little bit. Why? Pandemic. People say, I want to go back into the store. I want to have a proper experience again. And online pay is still valuable, will still continue to be a substantial part of retail media networks, but they're flat to decline. One, two, three points, almost universally globally. In-store digital, 
shoot for the moon kind of opportunity, brand new opportunity, especially here in North America. Europe's maybe two to three years ahead in many cases. And offsite streaming is the explosive category uh, with the highest growth and greatest potential. So let's start to think of the shopper as audience. What does that mean? Retail shoppers are a massive audience. Uh, I used US statistics simply because they're more accessible and in greater detail. But Walmart has almost twice the number of customers coming into the store, unique customers per month, than largest broadcast numbers. In that retail environment, what you have of tremendous value is the mass and the repetition. In the highest growth categories, highest opportunities are obviously in grocery, convenience, retail, health, and beauty for the number of trips. But this is the opportunity for trade in terms of that customer as an audience, and being able to build that audience both in store and at home on CTV. Another interesting point, 18 to 49, most valuable demographic. Guess what? They want to go back to the store. They're saying, wait a minute, I'm tired of the pandemic. I want to go back to the store and re-engage. Yeah, they're re-engaging much more in the physical store than other cohorts from an advertising perspective. The relevance of the shopper as an audience to the bottom line. There's this guy in Seattle, I think his name is Bezos. Uh, he's kind of interesting because he is the lion hunting the zebras on the plains of Serengeti. And in that business model, they, he continues to be able to chase the zebras and weed out the weakest ones of the herd. As a retailer, don't be that weakest one of the herd because <laughs> he is a monster. It is incredibly interesting, especially what they do with data. We'll show some of those metrics. Global retail advertising, 2023 was $121.8 billion. Huge marketplace. It's the value of that customer that makes it monetizable, that makes it interesting. If you tie that back to say, where does that money go? In North America, 83% of that goes to Amazon and Walmart. Absolute, the lion gets his fair share. It's more than his fair share. But when you think about it, how many physical stores does Amazon have? nearly as many as Walmart. How would you like to be in that discussion to be able to say, wait a minute, we're Walmart, we have all of these shoppers, but we're monetizing them at one-tenth the rate of Amazon? It's an interesting question, an interesting challenge. So, with all that being said, then think about within the store environment, how many stores do you have that have screens that a CPG or FMCG can actually buy? The challenge is here, a real estate opportunity of is there a display in store that a brand can invest in when on site on mobile? They can do that today quite easily. So, commerce media delivers outside the margin. This is a Kinsey slide uh, from our New York event. If you took out Walmart Connect and the operating profit of Walmart Connect from Walmart, Walmart would have to increase sales by $35.5 billion. Selling products, as you all know, is profitable, but it's tight margin. It's a business of pennies. Seven media, very high margins. In a Walmart environment of $35.5 billion that you have to make up, it's showing the substantial significant relevance of retail media as a new category that retailers have to capture to be profitable to Wall Street, to Bay Street, for the financial community to get. It's a serious business. Let's again look at the lion, Mr. Bezos. Amazon retail business profitability. If you take away retail media and the retail media aspect and you're just selling product, huge gap. The top line being Amazon's overall profitability with retail media. The bottom line being what it would be if you took that retail media out. If you stop selling ads, you, make, you lose a lot of money in that model. It's an interesting corollary for sure. If I tie that back in hard numbers, Amazon's advertising service revenue of $43.8 billion. So they sold $43.8 billion in ads versus $25.9 billion in actual product. When you look at Amazon, Amazon's an audience-driven advertising business that just so happens to fulfill a product. Really interesting model that way because the advertising margin is at 60% versus 10% on product. If I never sell a product again, as long as I'm driving that advertising, that's a really interesting so what does this mean? What do I think about as a retailer for 2024? Three-point plan. One, 
Decide if you're building a shop of marketing or digital alcohol networking store. In Europe, in Asia, many of the networks that you see in retail come from the digital alcohol side. You have the traditional large format outlet companies, Lamar's, Decos, et cetera, saying, you have eyeballs, I sell eyeballs, I want access to your customers. You have retailers that say, wait, you're gonna give me free money? Please come in, come in, come in. The reality is, what's the best and highest use and what's your North Star in that discussion? And the North Star always has to be how I serve that customer better, not just how I sell that customer for a quick deal. So when you're looking at the environment, decide, are you building a digital out of home network where you're simply selling access to that customer, or are you building a shopper marketing network? There are certain categories for digital out of home it could make more sense. I'm going to activate window, I'm going to activate outdoor, I'm going to put a billboard in my parking lot wall, a uh, large interstate or heavy traffic. Cool, that makes perfect sense. But the shopper is yours. Own the shopper, own the journey, own serving her better in that journey, and make sure that that's creative. The shopper marketing network opportunities are much larger, much higher CPMs, much better conversion, but they also require a lot of data. And in that requiring a data, make sure that you're able to tie loyalty data from the shopper's visit back to media consumed in store and action to be able to compete. I ask retailers all the time, who is your competition when you're selling a shopper marketing network? It's not Loblaws competing with Sobeys or Kroger, competing with Walmart, competing with Target. You're competing with TikTok, you're competing with Meta, you're competing with Google. The difference is you have the shopper in your store and you have the product on your shelf and the ability to convert that sale. They do not. Two, if you want to capture the digital shopper versus Meta, TikTok, and Google, have measurement infrastructure. We walk into retailer after retailer after retailer and say, I have screens. Cool. You did the easiest part first and the hardest part you haven't touched yet. Measure. From a measurement side, every screen that you place in the store has to be measured. Where there's a screen, you have compute, you have storage, you have to have measurement there. And I'll talk about the why. But the key point is, you have all the components. That measurement and that attribution is what you have to have in a shopper marketing network to make that element and to tie back that brand benefit to really drive a shopper marketing engagement. Why is that relevant? So the elephant in the room, in 2023, on 382 billion in digital advertising globally, 84 billion of that is fraud. There's an immense amount of fraud in the digital business when it's streaming, when it's dot com, when it's other. That from the brand perspective, those dollars are gone. When you're in store, that attribution, hey, I had a shopper in front of the display. I knew who that shopper was. I know what action was taken. The attribution and the transparency there, you as a brand working with a retailer, no case volumes. You know how many products that store is selling. So you can have as a retailer the perfect closed loop. Say you bought advertisement X, head impression Y, action Z. As Jeremy was talking about, closed loop use case, but you have to have a sensor. You have to be able to attribute that sale back. And this should all be in real time, easy to do, and easy to tie that through. But that requires on the retailer side, engagement with, point of sale, IT, all the key constituencies to close the loop on the data. Three, have a strategy for streaming and CTV capture and start the dialogues with loyalty and shopping insights teams now. When you start meeting the streaming market, you can track the customer in that retail environment to know exactly what was interesting to them. As a technologist, that's super easy to do. But inside the retailer, is that the right thing to do? Does that align with the values of the retailer? Does that align with legal? Does that align with compliance? The more that you know about that chapter in their journey, the better you can serve them to be able to say, hey, send me development messaging. Cool, I'm good with that. But tie those discussions in early to be able to know what that means. If I use the US example, streaming in 2023 in the US streaming ads was 6.3 million. This year it's $30 billion, a five fold increase. So the big secret around retail media, US, 
All the money that's flowing away from television is trying to find an outlet. And retail media is part of that opportunity. But the money is absolutely massive. So the ability to say, wait a minute, we have a credible streaming strategy is very important. And I look at that for Canada, for connected TV. I'd say the Canadian market on streaming is maybe 18 to 24 months away from that same mark, slightly behind, same thing with the like on US. But explosive opportunity. Why? Because you can target hyper relevance. I'm a customer that goes and shops organic at grocery. Peloton will pay a premium. Show me a retailer with a space in grocery that has the opportunity to take Peloton dollars for customer. You can unlock all these really interesting new corollary categories that around your shopper can be very interesting. And that all ties back to the loyalty programs. With that customer and tracking that customer in the store, the tie is always loyalty and opt in. So the customer is affirmatively opting into that in exchange for better targeting and a more customized experience. So, what does that look like? Best and highest purpose for retail media is defining the North Star. We walk into retailers around the globe all the time. What are you trying to accomplish? I want more money. Cool. Mm. Wrong, but cool. <laughs> How are you going to improve that customer's journey to find the North Star and make more money along that trip? Should be the question. So within that, improve her experience in the store. Help her achieve that strategic goal and give her a reason to come back to the store more frequently to have a better experience. The customer experience has to be first. The media income is a second thing. If you win the media but lose the customer, it doesn't help. So what can that look like for a shopper? In some of the customers that we engage with, the customer affirmatively connecting in at the beginning of her visit. Always give that customer the choice. If they say, hey, I don't want to be tracked, cool. Because she's going to vote with her dollars. If she likes that, she'll opt in and say, hey, this is a creative. This helps me in the journey. I can associate with a cart or a basket. Trackers on those carts or baskets to be able to know the exact precise location all the way through that store journey. You as a retailer know what the customer bought because you have perfect first part data. We can know what she was interested in. What did she look at and not buy? And then feed that back into your digital platforms. As I'm coming in the beginning of the store, what are the points that I bought last time that could be of interest to me today? Give me that relevant targeting. As I'm going through the store, I want to understand the sourcing of this product. So I'm trying to give that customer reason to be able to use their phone, track them through, AI-assisted app, AI-assisted selling, to be able to track back the products of the product. As I'm going through different experiences, micro-targeting. Hey, maybe I'm diabetic. Show me the products in this category that are most friendly to me. Maybe I'm celiac. Show me the non-gluten products. I can opt in relative to that more customized experience. As I'm going through, maybe I'm here and I shop on value today, on Tuesday, but I shop on selection on Saturday. Give me a curated, give me a concierge level experience all the way through that journey in the store. To the left, a somewhat interesting example from the time side, type pods, a partnership between brand and government. Of, we want to have more people use cold water because the energy savings, energy footprint, in a particular retail area. So let's have a partnership to be able to target the benefits and the value of this. How do I target that and get to that customer at that particular point of decision and choice? In personal health environments, help me get with product selectors. Do I have enough staff in a store? Hopefully, a lot of times, no. If I have that digital screen there, the ability to guide them through that and give them a curated experience, very strong. And then tying that to loyalty at the end of the visit on checkout. So you know exactly what they did, how long they spent in store, what were their points of interest, what did they buy or not buy. Then finally, as I'm back at home, I know you went down the aisle for a pet. I know you were there at dog food, but you didn't buy. So what the digital teams retarget to say, was it price, was it selection, what was the reason? Be able to test back against that. So in summary, embrace your customers as audiences, both in store and at home. The use of in-store media networks on site, screens in the store, as well as CTV, could open new paths to extremely high margin revenue and impact the bottom line. Again, if I refer back to the line of Mr. Bezos, Amazon is not slowing down the use of media to impact sales results. As a retailer, it's an interesting point to learn from. 
And then all the uses of media should enhance that shopping journey. If it's not better, if it's not helping her on her way, don't put it in store. Make it beneficial to every interaction with that consumer as part of the journey. Thank you very much.